kingdoms in Yemen and kingdoms in the Horn of Africa have been companions or friends for the longest time and that sometimes they would colonize each other. They were very familiar with each other. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the African whisk because every time I show it, it's always in the form of a rock engraving making it impossible to tell what exactly it is so i have to show these images of nubians giving african fans a whisk but these are fans they're not whisks african fans to egyptians as offerings so they've got gold they've got cheetah skin or leopard skin which the egyptians valued Obviously, you see that how the Egyptians have like see through cottonish good stuff, but they still want the cheetah skin as offering. And also, these fans that these Nubians are bringing to them. The only reason I zoom into this and multiply and talk about it over and over again is because the Egyptologists are like, we don't know exactly what the hell the flail was. Well, I'm showing you in this painting that you can clearly see that each person is carrying like two or more. They're actually carrying two each. And this is to show that this is an offering. This isn't for personal use. They're giving them to Egypt. Now, why would Egyptians care to get this from Nubians? One, obviously, it's because they have that to offer, but they obviously have gold. And some other thing in a jar but look at this you can tell by the way that it's made and because it's not rock that it's exactly those African whisks or those African fans I have to stop calling them whisks those African fans anyway back to Saudi Arabia and Yemen and why they're connected with Africa the elephant it's a large animal it's one of the hardest to hunt whether you're human or animal that's why wearing its skin was considered one of the biggest deals and of course it has other value besides this in Africa usually it's looked at as the king of the jungle though Europeans consider the lion the king but in Africa it's about defending yourself if you can defend yourself from the enemy you're the king but why should we care about this well there's two types of elephants there's the East Asian Southeast Asian elephant so India going towards China and those places and then there's the African elephant typically found now the Romans the Greeks and other people in the Middle East were introduced to these elephants the Romans typically by Indians and the Middle Easterners typically by Africans but how far back does this connection go well first in the third and fourth century the kingdoms of Aksum, the kingdom of Aksum, had vassals which would often bring in military elephants that would operate in the behalf, on the behalf of the Yemenites. And this happened prior to the third century as well. But how far back does it go? Well, if we look at Saudi Arabia, we find a very interesting image in a cave depicting a wall art of an elephant this obviously prehistoric engraving shows an elephant which was probably brought in from Africa because obviously in Saudi Arabia elephants just were not a thing and still aren't really not not in the wild interestingly these images 
are probably from 3000 BC to somewhere like 1000 BC because they also show camels being ridden by people which is when camels would have been tame which by the way they were tame tamed first in the horn of africa and then that spread throughout africa as you can see in some rock art all over africa and all over the horn of africa tame camels and then you can see here in the middle east tame camels this pretty cool shows the two connections these elephants are not wild and of course they would have probably died without the assistance of humans but earlier than this if we look at Las Gil we can see cattle being herded by human beings and you can see other tame animals in this cave called Las Gil I don't know how to say it properly the word gil at the end means camel and the last part I assume means watering hole that's what it's written so it's the watering area of camels obviously you can tell that at one point it was also the watering hole of other animals probably wilder but it's definitely the watering holes of camels and cattle and these human beings show various animals in Las Gil with humans surrounding them, probably tame. And this is why one of the evidences people use for early taming of camels in Somalia and Ethiopian regions. In Ethiopia, there's cave art as well of camels because there's a lot of one-humped camels in Ethiopia then we go back to Saudi Arabia and we see that this push happens that way and by the way the rock art of North African camels these camels being introduced later to North Africa because North Africa didn't have camels them being introduced later shows that it happens somewhere in Somalia Ethiopia region probably Somalia and then spread through those areas and of course I've shown you before they say that there's more diversity in the type of tame camels there are in Somalia as there are in any other place in the world especially early this means genetically they were being bred on purpose they're not natural in this image you can see a two human beings standing next to a domesticated dog and an animal that has the neck of a horse this is clearly not a horse as horses hadn't reached this region by this time they weren't even that fully tame by this time and they certainly weren't the size of a camel but if you look here this tame animal is probably a camel and you see in this next image that's definitely a camel but here's the kicker here's the part that's the most kicking part you see a domestic camel in Somalia by the way these cave art is from 3200 BC to 2500 BC okay so here's the kicker you see tame camels tame camels in 3000 BC to 2500 BC in Somalia and 3000 to BC to 2500 BC in to 1000 BC in Saudi Arabian cave, uh, not cave rock art so what does this mean well this means that either Saudi Arabians moved into Somalia or Somalians moved into Saudi Arabia this connection with the elephant makes it painfully obvious to me because you saw there in that site there was elephants and camels it makes it painfully obvious which direction we went they went from Africa into the Middle East 
otherwise there wouldn't be these tame camels the industry of camels would then take off while the industry of elephants would die down and this is because dromedies do well in deserts while elephants not quite